The first miscellaneous modeling technique I'm going to talk about is creating trees. There are some websites like CG Textures that offer pre-made models, but in a lot of cases you're just going to have to take your own pictures or Google images and edit them in Photoshop. In this example, I've acquired this evergreen. The first thing we're going to do is double click to make sure that this is on its own layer. And then we're going to hit Q to go into this mask layer. And we're going to start painting on top of the evergreen. I'm going to pause the video and uh, start it up when I'm done. So as you can see, I've masked out the tree. The next step is going to be to copy it onto a new layer and just get rid of that. Now we can crop it down to about the minimum that it'll go and put a darker green behind it. That way if you see anything around the opacity map it'll at least be that green color. If you want you can make another layer select this layer by hitting control and then clicking the tree and then select a light green with your eye drop and just paint around the edges there you can see that some of these edges have a little bit of blue around them but with this we can scroll through the different um, layers here and just find one that looks good as an overlay. This one takes out pretty much all of the blue, so I'm going to go with that and just bring the opacity down a little bit. So that was soft light. Good. So I'm going to hit Control E twice to flatten it into one layer. I uh, missed one step. Okay, so Control E once and then make another layer hit D for default to um, resume to black and white select your tree and with white fill in the tree make another layer drag it down control D for deselect X to exchange colors and G for your paintbrush tool now let's save this out as our opacity map Delete these two and save this out as our diffuse. The next thing we want is a cylindrical tree. I'm going to get that by marking about this much of the tree, copying it onto another layer, and then rotating it down. I'm going to do this eight times, sampling different sections of the tree, and create an octagonal shape. I'll start the video again when that's finished. So now you can see I've got a pretty circular shape. I'm just going to hit Control E a few times and flatten these layers. If I wanted to edit it, I could enter Liquify by hitting Control Shift X, which would bring up this dialog, at which point I could stretch my canvas a little bit so that it was more circular. As you can see, that just made it perfect. So next thing is to go in here and just select a middle for this. Copy it out of our diffuse. Hide our diffuse. And then crop it down and save this one out. Let's give it a little bit of a distance from these edges just so that we have some room to work with not too much. I'm going to do the same saving process for opacity and diffuse and I'll see you when I'm done. So now we're back in Max. I'm going to create a cylinder, bring the sides down to 12, the cap segments to 2, and the height segment to 1. Now I'm going to convert to editable poly, 4 for our um, face level, select our inside faces, Control page up to grow selection, Control E to invert and delete. Let's go into our left viewport and just make a cone shape. Good.
bring our tree base down to the bottom floor and now we're going to set our material ID to 2. The reason for that is that we're going to be working on a multi sub object material. So let's go into our material, click on standard, multi sub object, and delete all but two materials. The first one is going to be our evergreen tree, and the second, which we reach through this, is going to be our evergreen circle. Let's load these two materials. I'm just going to copy in the URL for this and throw our opacity map in. And now we're set to go. Let's apply this material. We can see it in the viewport by hitting this button. As you can see, we're looking at the opacity map because we hit this in the wrong channel. That's really useful if you want to see the opacity map, but we just want to see the map right now. So let's go into our right viewport and we want our tree to be about 10 feet tall. So I'm going to bring it up 10 feet. You can see how much you're moving in this dialog right here. I'm going to clone to element, so that's correct. And we're going to start scaling up the bottom of our tree. I want this height to be a little bit more extreme on the angle. So just start going in and manipulating the width and the height of these branches in here. Now no tree in nature is going to be perfectly symmetrical, so the next thing I'm going to do is go in and put a noise modifier on here. Let's bring our seed up and move this by about a... as you can see that's way too much, so... well actually it's not too much, it's just that our scale isn't... was too big. So let's bring that down a bit. And now, as you can see, it adds a lot of nice diversity into our polygons there. I'm just going to bring this down a bit. Oh, maybe up. 0.75. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now it's time for the second part of our tree. Let's go in and make a plane. I'm going to keep it at about 3 by 5. And convert to editable poly. Let's make sure our material ID is set to 1. It is. And apply our material. As you can see, it's not showing, so I have to go in here and turn this on. Let's make sure this is lined up nicely. I like that. So, but the top of the tree is over a bit, so I'm going to manipulate the polygon so that it fits a little bit better. That looks much better. Now I'm going to go in and rotate this in the top viewport with our um, faces mode on so that we're not copying to a new object every time we hit c shift and rotate it. Let's keep this pretty tight. Next I'm going to throw an FFD 3x3x3 three by three by three on here. and I'm going to rotate the center around a little bit, again to add diversity, and the top a little bit this way. I'm also going to scale it in a bit 
and add a noise modifier to that. If you're going to be making multiple trees, you might want to keep your noise modifier on the stack and keep these two objects separate so that you can make your trees look different before you bring it down. Let's see, if I remember, this was about 20 and this was 0.75. So let's collapse this, at, attach it, yes, that's fine. And now, as you can see, we have a pretty good tree. It's a little bit stagnant and repeating in here, so I'm just going to go in and on our element level, select some of these and rotate them. That'll give us a nice amount of diversity. So let's try rendering that again. And it looks much better. This is a quick and a easy way to make just about any tree you might want. Not all trees are shaped like evergreens, so whenever you make new ones, really study the shape of how the leaves and branches are falling out and think of creative ways to create a shape for your tree based around that. Remember um, noise, FFD, and proper opacity maps and you'll be just